Okay, first and foremost, I want to give all honours and praises and glory belongeth to my Lord and Saviour, whose name is Yahweh Bahasham Yahweh Shai Bahasham Wahav Akakwadash. The name of the Heavenly Father is Yahweh, and His Son's name is Yahweh Shai, who we reverence and double honours to the elder apostles of Great Millstone that teach this truth well. Okay, and to the hopeful elect across the globe, and to the few, the very few brothers and sisters listening and also learning across the globe this lesson okay is going to be based on our enemies okay our enemies let's go to proverbs 27 and 6 because in this truth what's our main duty when we teach is to build up the akiyam we're not doing it out of any type of wicked way we're doing it because we want to help our brothers out so when a brother gets on a particular level our whole thing is to build you up especially if you've been through particular things that's our whole duty as men of the Lord Yahabasham Yahabashai okay let's go to Proverbs 27 and 6 Baba Kashar and it says Proverbs 27 and 6 I want to start at For wrath is cruel and anger is outrageous. Okay, because wrath could be cruel. Because when, when you're acting out of wrath, okay, you're not thinking. And anger is outrageous. Because when you're leaning on your anger, what you do outrageous things. Okay? Who is but who is able to stand before envy? So how could you stand before someone that envies you? Because at every turn they're going to be trying to what? Overthrow you. Okay. Verse 5. Open rebuke is better than secret love. So when we do our lessons. I've always said this. We don't wake up and think. Oh who am I going to get on today? Because if you're doing that. Then you're not right. And the Lord will eventually get rid of you. Because you've had guys that have done that. Use the scriptures to try and um, belittle others. Okay. Open rebuke is better than secret love. So, brothers from time to time, they're going to get openly rebuked. Because it's better than a secret love. Because secret love is actually hate. If you're not telling your brother, that means you hate him. Okay. Faithful are the wounds of a friend. So, pay attention to these words. Faithful are, are, are the wounds of a friend. A true friend, okay, and it says wounds because what's a wound? A cut. So in this truth, remember what the script say in Hebrews four and what's it, eleven or twelve? The word is sharpened any two edged sword. So obviously you cut people, but we also get cut in this truth. Okay? So it says faithful are the wounds of a friend. Because that friend is telling you something from a good angle to help you out. He's not doing it out of a wicked mind so it says faithful are the wounds of a friend and you want a friend see if you're a true friend you're, you're gonna tell your brother you're not gonna be scared what he has to say if you're scared what a man has to say then that's not your friend okay so it says uh, faithful are the wounds of a friend when you go into that word wounds to smite to beat to strike so that's what this word does okay to whip Okay, to disquiet one's conscious metaphor. Okay, so that's what these words do. Okay, and this is how. How do you think we came to the truth? Because obviously we were cut. This is this is what bring us to the truth. Having these words, knowing that we were going off, and this is what really bring us into this word. And it says, "But the kisses of an enemy are deceitful." Okay. And what does that remind you of? Who does that remind you of? Judas. Didn't did he, did did not he kiss Yahabashai before he betrayed him? That's why it's good to be honest with your brothers. On e on every level. Okay. On every level. So we're gonna now go to Ecclesiastes 12 and 16, Baba Kasha. Uh, 
every day it's about building up on what your character. You know, so many things to work on. Let's go on Ecclesiastes 12, Baba Kasha, Baba Kasha. And let's go straight to, I want to go straight to, um, where are we, where are we, where are we? Let's go to eight. A friend cannot be known in prosperity. Okay. So in prosperity, a friend cannot be known when he's doing well. Because you have them fair weather friends. You have people like that. Okay. And an enemy cannot be hidden in adversity. Okay. So in adversity, that's when you see who your enemies are. Okay. And in prosperity, when you're doing good, that's when you know who's who. Okay? When you're that guy, everybody wants to be around you. You see what I mean? And in prosperity of a man's enemies will be grieved. It's not like in the prosperity of a man, enemies will be grieved. But in adversity, even a friend will depart. That's why there's only a few. And your friend is a brother. Those that are what to stick by you, no matter what. They rebuke you, but they stick by you. And they tell you the truth. They're not going to sugarcoat anything. Verse 10, never trust thine enemy, for like his iron rusteth, so is his wickedness. Okay? Though he humble himself. So, again, when it says never trust thy enemy, Esau, Edom, you can never trust what this man says. Because he tell you one thing, but at the end of the day, what's he looking to do? To overthrow you, for like his iron rusteth, so is his wickedness. So when iron rust, you, ca you cannot do that, that's, that's gone. When iron rusts, you cannot get that back to its condition. Okay? Unless, unless it's um, something called tempered iron that don't rust. Okay? But so is his wickedness. This is Esau's wickedness. And this is also referring to the wicked of our own people. Those that are not going to repent. Those that are going to be headlong in their wickedness. Though he humble himself and go crouching, yet take good of heed. Sasalakia. Yet take good heed and beware of him. Okay? So he's going to come in a humble manner, act like he's your friend, but go and go crouching. And the scriptures tell you somewhere in Peter's, your enemy as a roaring lion, going around crouching as a roaring lion, seeking who he, who he may devour. And that's speaking about the spiritual demon Satan, but what works in men's vessels. Yet take good heed and beware of him. So you've got to take head and beware and realise, no, this guy is the devil. And thou shalt be unto, unto him as thou hast wiped a looking glass. And thou shalt know that his rust. And what happens when you wipe a looking glass? There's some fog on it. That fog returns back again. And thou shalt know that his rust have not all been together wiped away. Okay? So you've got to be really careful what of your enemies. Vigilant. That's why the scriptures tell you to be what? Vigilant. This man is always looking for a way to scheme, to plot, to try and get one over on you. That's his MO. Okay? But the scriptures tell you what's going to happen to individuals like that. Let's quickly go to Isaiah 29. Bear me just a minute. Okay? Let's go to Isaiah 29 and 20, Baba Kasha. And it says... Bear me just a minute. Is this in the right translation? Quickly go to Isaiah 20, 29 and 20. Isaiah 29 and 20. And it says, For the terrible one is brought to naught, Esau, Edom. Okay, he's going to be brought to nothing. And the scorner is consumed. Another word for scorner is um, a mocker, a jera. It's brought, it's consumed. Okay. Maybe it's gonna uh, that individual is gonna be consumed by martial law troops, or by that fire, <laughs> okay. And all that watch for iniquity are cut off. Me, when I come into this truth, have you really got the time to watch for iniquity? No. If I see a brother going off, I let him know, and that's it. But we ain't got the time. See, we're so focused on ourselves, we ain't got the time to watch for iniquity. And who was doing that? That's Esau's mentality, and that's the wicked of our people's mentality. Them chief priests and Pharisees, they were watching for iniquity. What were they doing to the disciples when they were plucking corn on the Sabbath day? They were saying, look, your, your, your disciples are plucking corn. And I want to say Shabbat Shalom. 
as well. It's still the Sabbath in the UK today. Okay. And it says that make a man an offender for a word and that lay a snare for him. So we're not supposed to be like that. And reprieve is in the gate and turn aside a just thing for naught. Okay. In other words, what? Corruption. So you're not supposed to be watching for iniquity. You rebuke iniquity, but you're not supposed to be watching for it. Beady eyed, looking like Gollum from Lords and Lords of the Rings. Okay. Looking like a damn uh, what's it? Like a lima. Okay. So let's go to the next scripture, Ecclesiasticus nineteen. Baba Kasha. Because as much as brothers build up and so like a breakdown, no, we're here to build up. This is Ecclesiastes 19 and 20, 26. And it says, There is a wicked man that hangeth down his head. Okay, and I've seen this many a times. Okay, let's read this again. There is a wicked man that hangeth down his head. Sadly, okay, to fool you. See, that's see, see, this is deceit, but inwardly, he is full of deceit. Okay, inwardly, and you know, again, what does this remind you of? Remember, we're, speak, we're speaking about Esau, but we're speaking about the wicked of our own people, the wicked chief priests and Pharisees. Okay, but he hangeth down his head sadly to give you the um, the illusion that he's he's sad, he's repentant. But inwardly he is full of deceit, which is wickedness, casting down his countenance and making as if he heard not. Okay? But really he's eavesdropping. Where he is not known, he would do the mischief. Wickedness before. Though be aware. So that's why you gotta be aware. Okay? You gotta be aware. And if for want of power. Fame, vainglory, popularity, or to, to, to people that with popularity they want to protect their position, their rank. So they, they don't want to be spoken evil of. But this is why I always put out in the videos, we have sinned. I always put that out there. Even on my best day, nah, that's not good enough. Okay? That's the mentality every brother should have. But when you put yourself out there, you're holier than die. That's when people see, yep, you're really, you're really, you really, really, you really, you're wicked, inwardly, because it's all, look, it's all about the inward man, and whoever you are inwardly projects outwardly. So if you're projecting that you're so holier than die, okay, you, if you have to really do that, then really you're wicked, because a man that's righteous, his righteousness is going to be what from your have a shy. You're not going to be um. Making up your own righteousness. Oh, I'm a good guy. You know, uh, nobody has anything bad to say about me. I open the door for this guy. I'm a good Samaritan. But really, you're wicked. Because a man that's righteous, he doesn't need to say that. And he doesn't think he is. And if for want of power, he, he be hindered from sinning. Yet when he findeth opportunity. So this opportunist. That's why the scriptures tell you in Matthew's what, 10 and 16. Beware for I send you forth as what? Be, be wise as serpents and harmless as dove for I send you forth as sheep amongst wolves. Wolves are opportunist. Okay? And they roll in big packs. Okay? Yet when he findeth opportunity, he will do the evil. Okay? But the, the true men of the Lord, they're not going to have that mindset. Okay? So without further ado, I hope this video was edifying and teach the word be sincere because this, the Holy Spirit has, is being stripped from a lot of men and you have men that are going out there teaching but they're teaching in an evil spirit. So stay sincere, stay prayed up and continue pushing. Until the next time, Shalom.